Alhamdulillah that Allah's immense rahmah and love that guided us on this path into the heart of and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And Mawlana Shaykh's reminder always is this is the akhir zaman, these are the days of difficulty and every year we start on this gate of repentance and forgiveness and asking that Allah grant us on this journey. Every year the journey become more and more difficult because of the time in which we live. And a reminder for all of the difficulties that are around us, the immensity of these awliyaullah is you merely follow and recite what they gave. Recite the, the weird, the awrad, the recitations, every language has a different understanding. In, in English there's an etiquette for everything to be recited. They gave those etiquettes and we put them into the app. So for fajr, faraj, salvation, the morning prayer is a prayer of salvation. And Allah remind for us, be like the birds that they understand the difficulty of the day and they praise their Lord for thankfulness and they praise their Lord for protection. And the fajr, faraj, salvation. Our prayer is actually the salvation prayer that starts the day. So then imagine in a day that is so much oppression that Mawlana Shaykh described there are 800 demons that control this earth. Their number doesn't go up one and doesn't go out down one. They don't die and they have a life of eternity. Until Allah determined their time is finished. When they begin to reveal themselves then they're no longer under the protection of to die and to come back, die and to come back, they will be burned. And their headquarters is Los Angeles. Through Los Angeles their media empire and marketing empire inspire every wickedness, every evilness, every deviation from what humanity is supposed to be is taught from there. So then those are their big awliya, those are the big supporters of shayateen who move the engine of his belief upon this earth. And Mawlana Shaykh's reminders they plan, Allah is planning much greater. And there are those whom are in training to bring upon this earth what no eye has seen, no ears have heard. The amount and the extent of what Allah will bring from Divine Fire upon this earth through the hearts, hands, souls of awliya. Just from their eyes what type of fire will be released upon this earth. Targeted towards these demons, their help, helpers, their supporters. But until we reach that time they gave for us our salvation. They gave for us Salat al-Fajr, that when you pray Salat al-Fajr the prayer of salvation, the prayer of the morning prayer. You're asking for the protection, the blessings, the lights, the dressings of what's about to open for that day. Is that a day that you die? Is that a day that you'll be burned? Is that a day that you'll be hit by a car, God forbid? We don't know what the day will bring to us. We don't even know if we survive the night but those who survive the night during these zulamats, we don't know what the day brings. So even now more than ever this faraj and this protection has an immense reality. That you're lining up for prayer, reciting what Allah has said for us to recite, what Prophet has given, 
for us to recite and what Prophet has inspired within his holy companions, his holy family and those whom followed that way and the great Imams that are the masters of the madhabs all the way down to the ulama and the shaykhs and awliya. Continuous inspiration, continuous medicine for every sickness because the nation is never alone. The nation is not by themselves, the nation is a mighty nation supported with a mighty, mighty power. And so in this time of oppression they're injecting people and the reality of this injection and the injections that will be coming and the dose behind the dose and the dose behind the dose is of two understandings. Dajjan, Shiatin and his representatives want to kill people, burn people, destroy their belief, their physicality and their soul. If you take from what they teach and through their one-eyed machine believe and you use it because of their belief this is against the heavens because you're not believing in Allah and you believe that the garbage they produce will save you and there is no protection and there is no power and there is no help except in Allah They find line in its understanding, say, we're going to help you, here you are, take this, here's this. If you run to it, you've run towards disbelief thinking it's going to help you. But alhamdulillah awliyaullah come into the heart and begin to describe. But when they force you and they say that it's mandated and that is a zulumat that now entering onto this earth. It's mandated that we want to kill you. They plan and Allah plans better. Once they mandate it then whatever they do and you're forced to do you're under Allah's protection. If it's non-mandatory and you run to it you're choosing that fire, then live with the choice that you've made. But when they come and say, there's no door but this door and you stand here with this thing ready for you, then Allah says, don't worry, you're now under My protection because I hear the prayer of those whom are oppressed. Say, Ya Rabbi they're oppressing us. They're making something mandatory upon ourselves and our children that we don't agree with. And we have no right and have no strength and have no voice, you are our protector. And Allah says, step forward whatever they put into you will be like water. Merely my angels will stand there and make everything to be a water that injected to you. No sickness can come, no fire can come, no difficulty can come if Allah with us. So means then awliyaullah gave that system for us in their recitations. These recitations are our nijat and we never know when Allah is activating these du'as, these Qur'ans, these du'a, these hadiths, whatever has been given to us are medicines. When we recite them you say, I don't know if anything working, it doesn't matter what you know, you don't even know your names in heaven, who cares what you think you know. You just recite Allah knows best. Make everything activated, whatever power has to come, whatever sickness has to be defended. O might and majesty in the hands of Allah through the beloved tongue of Sayyidina Muhammad So alhamdulillah we go now in the qunut for our fajr prayer. The qunut in the fajr prayer and this qunut is from Imam Shafi, huh? Yeah. And why the fajr prayer different from the Isha prayer qunut? 
Faraj and Fajr, as soon as we recite in the Fajr, we pray the first rakah, we pray the second rakah. Before we go into sujood on this second rakah Fajr, you make the qunut. Right from the qunut, you go into sujood. Why? Because of the power of this qunut and that you're immediately going into sujood for Allah to grant its reality. So, you make the qunut and immediately you're in, in the sujood from its reality and its power of what Allah because we don't know but the soul knows that when it makes this request, it's asking Allah that grant me this najat, grant me this salvation. So you go to the app, you open up the fajr and through the awrad of fajr you get to the second raqah and then the qunut from Imam al-Shafi and its majesty and its openings of what Allah would dress the believer especially in these days of difficulty. So that the believer should have no fear, no grief that they're about to do this to us, they're about to mandate to this. They do whatever they want if Allah with us and says that they mandate it now I'm defending and you're doing it because you've been forced to do it, I make it like water into your body, inshaAllah. InshaAllah we'll recite the du'a qunut. For Imam Shafi in the Naqshbandi awrad that's to be recited on the second rakah of the Fajr prayer. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Allah Fajr in sujood, asking Allah for najat and salvation from what was recited, a protection from the zulamat of that day and whatever shaitan is planning, Ya Rabbi your plan is to be better and more powerful, protect me, my family and my community. Then the Sharaf and Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam wa alayhi 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 wa s
wa sayra wa saldatina wa sidqina al fatiha Ya Rabbi Allah guide us by your favours to those whom you guided. Pardon us with those whom you have pardoned. This is for the immensity of oppression opening upon this earth and forcing of this oppression upon people, upon children now, upon everyone is going to be pushed. That you have pardon. Bring us close to those whom you have brought and befriended. Bless us in all that you gave us, protect us and turn us away from the evil of what you have decreed. Because Allah wrote everything and for it is you that decrees and there is no decree upon you, you don't You do not humiliate the one whom you have befriended and not increase and empower the one whom you have taken as an enemy. Blessed and exalted are you Ya Rabbi, our Lord and to you all praise for what you have decreed. We ask your forgiveness Ya Rabbi, Ya Allah and turn to you in repentance, Allah's blessings and peace be upon Sayyidina Muhammad at that point of the du'as, the intercession. As soon as we're mentioning Sayyidina Muhammad's name in a du'a, it's the intercession of Prophet to make that request to Allah The family and his holy companions, Ya Rabbi Allah lift from us these trials which no one can lift but you. Give to us to drink from the rain of your bountiless, your endless mercy. Let us not to be of those despondent. Ya Rabbi forgive us and have mercy upon us for you're the most merciful of the mercy. Ya Rabbi Allah open for us and the manifest opening for you're the best of openers. And the last remnant of the people who did evil they were cut off. Praise be to Allah Lord of all the worlds, Holy Qur'an Surat Al-Anam 645, Allahu Akbar. We pray that Allah activate Ayatul Kareem and these immense du'as as a protection against the oppression that open upon the earth and anyone being forced to do something that they don't want to do and they have to do it, fear not Allah inshaAllah with you and that Allah make it to be like water and not allow it to be something harmful and disastrous for insan, their families, their children and their communities. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillah ya rabbil alameen. InshaAllah this is the holy month of Muharram and the immensity of the hijrah, the moving of this pilgrimage, moving of this reality and Holy Qur'an dressing us and blessing us. Surah Tawbah is our guide for this blessed month. The month of repentance, the gate of repentance and then Prophet's example of that reality is the movement, the movement from oppression into the world of light. And that's the hijrah and the beginning of the Islamic calendar in which every month has an immense reality. Every month is just a symbol of the seven or the twelve veils that lie above us in our spiritual pursuit. That every month has a tajalli and a light which are the symbols of these twelve hijabs of light, twelve veils of light that the believer's soul is moving inshaAllah into those realities. The first of which is Muharram 
and that immense blessing, immense dressing and Holy Qur'an dressing us and Surat Al-Tawbah, the ninth surah and then the verse 40 is the movement into the secret of this surah. So 9-40 is the event of Prophet being in the cave with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. As we said that when that hijrah began and permission for migration began that leave the oppression of Mecca and this has an immense reality that for 13 years of struggling and Mecca represents the station of the heart. That if anyone thinks they're struggling for two years or three years or four years the best of all creation Sayyidina Muhammad was giving 13 years of immense hardship. And Mecca represents a station of the heart, means how much the heart bombarded, how much difficulty from around, how much difficulty in, how much sadness of death, how many children that Prophet lost during this time, how much difficulty from the community, how much torture, how much pain. And Allah said, 13 years enough is enough. The the torture of the station of the heart and the active heart, now go in. Means what? I'm opening for you the city of lights. Because every step that Prophet made, he didn't make it for himself, already has his station and his reality. These were movements that would drag and dress his entire nation. That every step that Prophet was making was a dress upon the nation that would be following and receiving those tajallis. That you too will struggle. If you're one whom you want to struggle with your heart and you don't want to give your heart to devils, then Allah qalb al mu'min baytullah. If you truly believe that the heart is the house of God, throw shaitan out from your house. From your physical house, your spiritual house, fight the shaitan and throw him out. And that's a life of struggle, life of struggle. That at every moment shaitan is trying to enter into that house and corrupt its belief. So then 13 years of struggle Allah then open, I'm going to open for you the city of lights, it's paradise. I'm going to open your malakut and your lightly reality, the reality of your soul I'm going to open it. And because you're the exemplar of faith, your nation, if your nation follows this way and struggles against themselves, I will open for them the reality of Madinatul Munawwara. So then this path of struggle every year, you go in one year, ten years you're doing this. Some of us eleven years open the center, twelve years and then thirteen years you inherit a reality of struggle, that you struggle, you struggle struggle and one time you look into your heart and Allah begins to open your city of lights. So this is an immense, this is why we say this is the month in which sainthood is granted, vision is granted, lights and knowledges are granted, realities are granted because it's the movement into that world of light and malakut. So the immensity of that, the one sitting in the bed as a young child is teaching You're not ever too young to struggle against yourself and self-sacrifice. We don't bother other people, we don't antagonize people, we don't post comments against people. Even their doing wrong has nothing to do with me. I'm not getting attacked by shaykhs, I'm not opening my mouth back to anyone. It's not my business. It's not anyone's business to make a comment on another person's page that's negative. You are an oppressor and following shayateen ways. So it means this way is I struggle against myself, fight all my bad characteristics and struggle, struggle, struggle and move towards this reality. And this Imam Ali represents the secret of the hijrah, that sacrifice yourself, take the path that's harder against yourself. Because the two sahabi are giving us an example of this reality. The young and futuha, 
the, the chivalrous one is teaching, put yourself in the bed, let them come to get you. Means every bad desire has to be gone, it has an immense reality when we think the one at the gate Ulul Bab from youth is teaching us Futuwa, why is because it's a youthful innocence. Not that you're jaded and aged person but to carry the youthful innocent regardless of the age of your physicality. That you're jovial, you're happy. Again who was the example of this? Mawlana Shaykh Sultan al-Awliya, he was always such a happy person. You visit him, what kind of burdens he's carrying? One minute he's giving a serious talk, next minute he's joking to everybody in the room. Make everybody happy, make everybody happy. This is a, the youthful innocence. You would look at him like he's a youthful innocence but a huge rijal, huge in power. But the ability to make people happy and ease and this is futuwa. That be innocent, be clean, keep your eyes clean, keep your character clean but be fierce in the way of Allah against yourself. And Sadiq al-Mutlaq, the be beloved friend of Sayyidina Muhammad then takes our other leg and says, now come to this cave as I went with Prophet Come to this cave and be truthful. Inherit from me truthfulness. Inherit from me that I gave everything in the way of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah so my whole love was that way. So when we follow Naqshbandiyya, you're following the way of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq And you're being dressed with Siddiqiyya realities of truthfulness, good character, that your deed and your actions are true, that you're sincere. And that you're, you're, you're trying to be of service to the best of your ability to the way and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And you don't know at which year you really believe it and you go. And then what happens? The cave. Prophet didn't just go straight into Medina, why? Because the immensity of the secret of the cave, that we have to stop at the cave. There's a reality that's transpiring within the cave and that cave is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And that cave for Prophet is the heart of Allah's Divinely Presence, the Divinely Essence of the Divinely Presence that can't be understood by insan. But for us our cave is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why Muharram is the beginning of a journey into the heart of Divine Realities. Because later they tell you, oh this heart is the heart where Holy Qur'an is manifesting. This is the heart of power, the heart of lights, the heart of every ocean of reality. So we have to stop into this heart to be dressed by its realities, blessed by its realities. And then from that heart whatever has to be dressed into that reality, only from the reality of that heart this city of light begins to shine upon insan and that becomes the world of malakut and the world of your soul. That when your heart leaves your, your heart and you rid yourself of your heart and enter into the Muhammadan heart then that becomes the Divinely Presence, that becomes the reality of Qalb al-Mu'min Baytullah. Because the mu'min should have learned by that time it's not them. Annihilate yourself to be nothing but I want for myself, Ya Rabbi a Muhammadan heart. My heart I don't trust it to be clean, my heart I know that has no benefit. Ya Rabbi wash my heart, give me heart transplant and make my heart to be of a Muhammadan heart Amen. that capable of containing La ilaha illallah with all its realities and all its dress and all its blessings. So in that cave is the doorway to that reality to understand and we're all in that cave, still in that cave being dressed by Muhammadan haqqaiqs. And they can only be from that cave 
to even speak of Haqiqat al-Muhammadiyyah and to have understood anything from Haqiqat al-Muhammadiyyah all of it is still being taught in that cave right now. We never left the cave. When Prophet entered in with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq something happened at a light reality. Light has no time, it happened and it never ended. The physicality may have gone somewhere, the ruhaniyat and spirituality never ended and everybody's light was in that cave. Just a, a dot of their Adam was called into that cave and whatever Prophet is receiving of Divine emanations and sending to that reality of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, all those whom are under the flag of Naqshbandiyat al-Aliyah was actually Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq as Siddiqiyah. And they're receiving those lights and dressings and blessings for all of eternity because of the symbol of the Muhammadan heart that was dressed and that that light is continuously dressing, continuously dressing. So the immensity of that barakah and that blessing something that can't even be understood nor does the tongue have the ability to even speak something from that. But whatever is being given, whatever knowledges are, are being bestowed it's from that cave and the dress of that cave, the eternal reality of that cave. And as a result Madinatul Munawwara opens into that Muhammadan heart where Allah sends the light of your soul and its realities and begin to dress you from that reality. So the immensity of Ashura is that reality that on the tenth of Ashura Prophet entered into Medina to Munawwara is the symbolism for us to understand that this struggle, this movement, these haqqaiqs and then Ashura comes and Allah open, here's your soul, here's the city of your lights which is your soul and what Allah has bestowed upon it of lights, of realities, of knowledges, it's all been dressed upon the servant, they merely have to enter into their city. So at one point in our life we have to agree to leave our physicality, leave all the physical understanding and the physical bad characteristics and we make a hijra inside. Ya Rabbi I'm going to take this way of tafakkur and contemplation, I'm going to push all these bad characteristics. Every time you argue, every time we get angry, every time we have characteristics it wasn't for your soul, who is it for? Did your soul need for you to argue with somebody, to prove yourself right with somebody that you're debating, to get angry at, at people? It was just for the body. So at one point they're asking, will you ever leave these body affairs? Will you stop defending the body, stop defending your mind, stop defending your physical issues and now join us in the world of light? When they stop with their physicality they don't care for it anymore and they want to make this year's hijra in their heart. And in their heart they can't have bad actions, they can't have bad thoughts. In the heart has to be the ocean of muhabbat and love, Divine love, never reduce this teaching to a physical love. We go, oh I love you because you talk about love I love you, no, no, no this is a spiritual in which this is a love for the Divinely Presence, this is a love for the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, forgive me for my wrong. That you're not doing good things because Allah is going to beat you but you do good things because you love Allah and Say, Ya Rabbi you give me everything, you've fed me, you've taken care of me, when I was sick you healed me. You've given me beyond my even understanding of why you've given to me out of your mercy, I don't want to disappoint you. And that's why you begin to do what you do and only through that niyat and that intention you can reach perfection. Because when you do for love, your love is, is a magnet locked onto the heart 
of the one you love of Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad It's not your mind trying to tell you you're in love but when you open that reality your heart is moving, your soul is moving into Allah's presence. Not your head, not your body can stop it and your family can't stop it, your relatives can't stop it. You do what you do out of love, people like it, they don't like it, ahlan wa sahlan, I'm locked, I'm lost in this Divinely love of Allah and His Sayyidina Muhammad His Rasul. That love draws us and pulls us into that reality, perfects and dresses us from that reality. That is the, the amazing essence of that hijrah, the immense benefit of that hijrah and the lights of Ashura that bestowed upon the soul. So means that this Muharram and every Muharram immense, immense to start off with repentance, ten days of repentance of maghfirah and forgiveness and then asking, Ya Rabbi please I want to make my physical hijrah always but my spiritual hijrah. I want to leave the defending of my body, leave it and I just want to go with my soul into the heart. Because every time you defend the body you put a darkness into your heart and then it makes more spiritual work you have to clean. Every time you yell there's more dirt into your heart. That's why they keep teaching the example of insanity but I don't think people get it. So when I yell at you, scream at you, I just threw a whole bunch of immense garbage into my heart, Allah just left, the lights left and now you have to clean the heart. So the, the example of insanity is that you keep doing the same thing but you're expecting a different result. You say, when am I going to have this, when am I going to do this, when am I going to experience this? When are you going to experience this when you keep… stop throwing the garbage into your heart. There's no one else who can do that for you, there's nobody else coming to clean your heart. You have to clean your heart. But you want to yell, you want to scream and you say, I want all the openings too. So Allah says at some point, grow up, stop it, those are all your physical and you're throwing garbage into the heart and that's why you see awliyaullah they don't argue. You start to do something they walk away, in their home too. If you want to grab them to come back and resolve this and that, say, no, 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 you're throwing garbage into my heart. That's what we said on the examples of the eleven principles, wuqaf qalb. You have to be in a state of continuous vigilance of your heart. Every time somebody arguing you have to look to your heart, and you, you feel the palpitation in your heart, something's not right, shaitan's coming. He's coming to throw something into your heart that you won't be able to get rid of for a long time. The anger, the, the whatever the character is, it's going to be thrown into the heart and then the realities don't open. So it's not the shaykh can do it, somebody else can do it. You are the one who's in charge. As soon as you stop the characteristics the heart becomes pure. When the heart is pure Allah's light resides within that reality. Prophet's light resides within that reality. And everything that you're asking for will already be there because you prepared that heart with that immense character, the good character and now you're beginning to make the hijrah into your heart. Ya Rabbi keep my heart to be clean, I don't need the outside interferences. And then your zikr and all your practices, your salah, everything is in the state of that reality. And when you're making your tafakkur and making your contemplation, you're asking for these lights to come, these blessings to come, that my heart is in need of these fayas and the lights of pious people, that's what was the du'a, that keep me in the company of those whom you've befriended, that you made to be your awliya, those whom you favoured of the nabiyeen, siddiqeen, shuhadahi wa salihin, those whom you love Ya Rabbi, let me to keep their company. Even if you're a person on top of a mountain with nobody around, Allah will keep awliyaullah all around you. And if you're physically allowed and you can watch, you're keeping the physical company. But when Allah is talking He's not caring for this earth. Qur'an is not for the earth, 
Qur'an is for all of eternity. So when Allah says, take the company of Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. Are you supposed to be finding Nabi'een somewhere on this earth and then looking for physical sh- Siddiqeen? So Allah giving isharat, keep their company with the power I gave to you of your firasal, your spiritual vision and your heart. Keep their company, connect with them, be with them, keep the, the highest association by connecting your heart that I want to be with them. And that light and that blessing to be dressing with you, as these lights dress into your heart then Allah says, that's the best of company because Allah's with them. If you're able to keep the company of Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin in your heart then you have to know your heart is filled with Allah And that's why then watch out for the firasal of the believer, he looks with the light of Allah because in his heart is the light of Prophet Nabiin, Siddiqeen, all holy companions, all Ahlul Bayt, all the shuhadahum they, they were martyred in bad character left and they witness Divinely Presence and all the Salihin who continuously follow all of those realities all reside within the heart of that servant. Then the immensity of the power of that heart is something that can't be understood. We pray that Allah grant more and more understanding for the spiritual hijrah mm-hmm. and that we enter into these world of lights and that this ashura Allah open for us these lights and these blessings to reach towards these understandings. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.